Generic greetings and welcome to Production Line. This is a game about shaving cats. Who would have thought with a name like Production Line that... No, it's not. Obviously, it's not that. It's a game about a production line, specifically a car production line. You have to make a vehicle and in order to do so, you will place different stations and modules and connect them all up and make sure they have resources and then you'll build a vehicle, ship it, sell it, profit, capitalism, job done. And obviously, you want to then continue doing that, but... There's going to be some issues. You're going to have bottlenecks, you're going to have resource problems, and it's your job to manage that. It's a game that I've played about an hour of, so certainly your first impressions here, not a review. And also, it is very, very, very early on in development. As you can see from the top right, this is Alpha 1.01, .01, so essentially, it's not finished, shall we say. Uh, so you're going to get placeholder stuff, it's going to have bugs, just expect all of that. Either way, I'm going to show you a bit of it and you can decide whether it's something for yourself or not. Let's go to new game and you can select varying factory starting sizes as well as monies. I'm going to go with medium factory because it's a 34 by 36 with a starting cash of I believe 2 million. We'll click play and here we are. We'll just pause it for a second, although to be fair it doesn't really matter. You only spend money when the production line's going and since we have just got an empty warehouse it really doesn't do anything. So as I said, the idea is that you have to make a car, so we have to place down different modules, different stations, and build it. Let's have a quick look at the sort of things we can place. So we've got resource conveyors, resource importers, conveyors, chassis assemblies, uh, fit in the body areas, uh, painting, engine fitting, that sort of thing. At the moment, you have to build it in a specific order of chassis, body, paint, engine, accessories. Although I have done it, I'm pretty sure, on a previous save, chassis, body, engine, paint, accessories, and it still worked. So, you know... Who knows whether it's going to be changed or whether it's a bug, I just don't know. So, I'll show you how to build a basic car and then ship it. You can only get one car at the moment, like I say, it is still early on. So, you know, you can't, like, place... I don't think you can make, like, uh, electric vehicles or whatnot. You can't select those, but I'm guessing that's something that's going to be expanded on later on. And, you know, you do have a fairly big technology tree, and this is only going to get bigger. Anyway, so, let's place our first... Uh, our first station. This, this is a chassis assembly area and you can rotate the middle mouse button and you can see we've got this green overlay where it's going to place and I'm going to shove it there. There we go. Right, so we've got some robot arms, we've got some guys looking going, are, are we going to be out of a job in six months? Yeah, probably. Uh, we've got some pallets where we're going to be putting resources and just, you know, just generally nice art. Very nice. And what will happen is when this gets resources, it will start to build a chassis. But... How long is that going to take? Well, according to this, it says time 25. Okay, so it's going to take 25 seconds in order to do build it. So, that's good. It also has some requirements, as you can see. Two axles. Uh, no, one axle. One set of axles. Okay, fine. So, should we actually build it? I think we shall. We shall shove down a resource importer, which has to go in these windows here. Essentially, these are resource intakes, and that is where you export your vehicle. Shove that down, and there you go. So we have a little window. Resources come in. We'll take a resource conveyor, and we'll connect it up to the red bit, uh, going that way, and then into that. So that is now connected up. Oh, you can see these. Um, this is all like uh, hovering in midair. If I unpause it, it disappears. That is noted to be fixed in the next alpha version, which is almost certainly going to be out by the time you're watching this video. So these resources stream along and get dumped on the pallet, and you can see we've got things like uh, that looks like a fuel tank of some kind. We've got different parts of the chassis. We've got drive shafts, that sort of thing, and the robots are welding away. And all the lights flash to show you that it is actually functioning and these are sort of scratching their heads going yeah um so what did you watch on the tv last night oh nothing it was just just emmerdale and stuff yeah it's pretty boring and stuff actually I, I can't imagine that i don't know where this is actually supposed to be set i guess um you know america's known for well automation was it ford henry ford and that that sort of pioneered the thing i don't really know um so, we've got this vehicle uh, here. It's, well, I say vehicle. It is currently basic value uh, $18,000 generic units of currency or generic credits, whichever terms you prefer. And it is now built, but it needs to move on to the next station. So, we will actually place down a body fitting station, which will shove there. Okay. And then we will take a conveyor and we'll connect it up. There you go. And it moves along. And it will go to there and do nothing because we've got no stockpile. But... Now what's happening over here? Well, we are building the previous, oh sorry, the next one. We are building the next one, so that's good. Oh no, are we building the next one? Or is it still waiting for the resources? Um, yep, it's still waiting for the resources. They haven't actually come in yet. There we go, they are now getting dumped down. And it should build the next one. Is it building? 
I don't know if it's building or not. Yes, it is building. There you go. When you uh, click on the area, the, the module, the, the whatever it is, this thing here. Um, the station. Uh, it shows you what's what part it's on. So it shows you uh, what the current task is. So the current task is fuel tank, which is this box here. But it'll be things like axle, axle, drive shaft, blah blah. And we'll we'll well we'll actually just I'll just click OK and you can see what's happening. So the first bit is current task, fit rear axle, and then it'll complete that task and then go over to the fit front axle. Then it gives you a readout of the exact time for the full thing. It shows you the status and power demand. Currently we've got a massive power demand, but we don't care because it's not even implemented. It shows you the request requirements as well for that part and what's in the stockpile and some employees as well as upgrades which we can get extra robots only when we've researched them I'll get to research in a moment and uh, gives us a list of the uh the overall like time and what it's been doing so it's spent 99% of its time running and 1% waiting for resources so this is will help with efficiency later on which is essentially what the game's all about so this one speaking of efficiency and lack of this one has a chassis there waiting for the body to be uh, placed on it same as the one behind it and we know that another one's going to be coming along in about 25 seconds but we've got no resources so we should resolve that by taking conveyor and pulling it out from here and expanding this along and across obviously all of this costs money and it can actually vary in cost based on where you place it. See that cost uh, 2,800 to place it over the top so it costs a little bit more. But there you go what's going to happen is all the resources are going to stream into this and then over to this one here so it's about managing your resources as well. I do like the look of the game it's uh, very very pretty actually. There you go. It does remind me of uh, sort of big farmer. I guess the, the best way to describe this game is a mix between Big Farmer and Factorio, I think is... I don't think that's unfair to call it a mix between the two. Anyway, because we've got, like, rolls of metal and things like that. <laughs> and loads of doors. By the way, later on you can actually just... Instead of bringing these resources in, uh, or rather bringing these parts in, you can just bring raw resources in and make them. Like, just build them inside your factory with research. So things like axle manufacturing, stuff like that. I have tried a little bit of this out, but I haven't really expanded into it. As I said, I've only played uh, just over an hour now. And pause it a second while I go down to research office, because what we want to do is shove this down and start doing some research. I'm going to place it just out the way back here. Place one there, and actually we'll place a couple of them because you uh, research faster the more you have. So there you go, seeing no research, we'll click on that one. We'll say show all research, and we can research any amount of things. I'm going to research more robots. Start research, there you are. Okay, so what's happening over here? Well, then body panels are being placed on. There you go. We're starting to get a decent looking car. And it is, well, fitting the body and fit the uh, wing mirrors. And it is done. It takes 63 seconds to do all of that. Fantastic. So we need to move on to the next station. And we will paint it. So we'll go to about, mm, probably about there. We don't need much of a gap for this one. So we'll go up to there. And this will paint it. Again, doesn't have any access to the stockpile, so we will resolve that, like so. You can see when you're clicking and dragging, it sort of um, changes the uh, opacity of all of this and makes it more transparent, so you can see where you're dragging your your line. And where it's got a red dot essentially means you need to uh, connect it up to there. Okay, so that's going to stream along. Now, we we'll probably have some resource problems because we are trying to have... Well, we're trying to get three stations run off the same resource line. Look, there's loads of paint coming along. I wonder if there's going to be events later on and accidents where paint spills and stuff. <laughs> Who knows? It could be all sorts of stuff. And this is our paint centre, so it will be painted up, it'll be undercoated, it'll be... Well, you'll get different things on it, actually. You'll get probably all in one. So this is uh, dry undercoat first, and then that's baking it on. And then it'll go to uh, the like the other stuff, like the primer. Actually, no, primer is the undercoat, isn't it? Just a different term. Either way, it's painting the car, and then it needs to dry it and stuff. So we'll speed up to a little bit faster here. Max speed, in fact. Why not? And there you go. It's going to paint finish, and then finally drying the paint and stuff like that. We don't have the fans spinning around or any lights on that. I don't know if that's going to be added later on. Hopefully, you know, more detail is always good, but who knows? Who knows? Uh, when you get to big factories, you don't even see it anyway because you're probably looking from this view. But while we're here, we'll actually explain this one. So... The colours here just sort of give you an idea of what this is. So, you know, when you start learning the colours, you can look and go, ah, I know what all this stuff is. But the ones you want to really take note of is the picture, the little symbols of the car and the colour of them. So green is essentially good. It's saying, yep, everything's good. No problem, no waits. Yellow means it's actually been waiting there a little bit of time. And when it goes red, you have screwed up because it's been sitting there for ages. And speaking of sitting there for ages, we haven't fitted an engine and this car's ready to go out to the next part. So we will use a conveyor. And and then move it up and again we've got no resource stockpile but what I'm going to do 
is uh, well, we could connect it up to the same one, but I'm not, I don't think so. I think what we'll do is have a resource import over here and then we'll import our resources all the way across, mainly because I just want to show you that you can do that. So there you go. You can have different importers and you can see what's actually coming in. There you go. So you've got, uh, some sort of geary bit. What's that? Like the clutch. You've got, is that starter motor or maybe the alternator? You've got valves. The very big valves though, aren't they? <laughs> Exhaust, wheels, stuff like that. There you go, we've got a nice, nice yellow car. And it is uh, building it. There you go, again, you've got a big readout of what it's been doing. As well as what's in the stockpile. You've got radiators, exhausts, uh, steering columns, things like that. And it's uh, putting the uh, exhaust on. Let's just say it's fitting resource. Uh, fitting wheels. Okay, cool. So what's the next one? That's fit the engine. We need to fix the, fit the accessories. So we'll spin that round. And fit the accessories is, well, your, I guess it would be things like your seats and wing mirrors and stuff like that, which is quite important. Over to there. And we will connect up to the resource stockpile like uh, so. You can, you can go straight over your own, uh, like, modules you can, over your um, stations. There's no problem with that. It just costs you a bit more. And also it doesn't look as nice because it's you know you might want to look at this sort of stuff. So insufficient resources, they will be streaming along. There you go. So you've got what's that? Uh lights, seats, windscreens, horns, yeah. Obviously later on, um, and as the game progresses and stuff and gets a bit more uh meat on the bones, it will have, I'm guessing, sort of selections so you can say i want to put a sat nav in this i you know you can you'll make options and variants of cars i want to put um stereos in you know whatever that sort of thing heads up display jetpack the lot so this is almost finish off it's a fit accessories there's fit electronics but um well i don't think you need it we'll go to quality check and we will see if this car is legit so we'll use the conveyor into the quality check and then we need to export it and i think we'll export it over the far end there so we'll take a export bit and we'll shove it there and you can see we've essentially got a guy on phone saying right we've got another car coming get ready to sell 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 go 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 and we'll connect that up like that and like that, right. And that's our car. Streaming along the production line. Only cost us a million to build this production line, which is actually nothing. I mean, I'm guessing one of these, one of each one of these robots is, I wouldn't say a million, but you never know, depending on what type of robot it is. You know, it's going to be hundreds of thousands, I'm guessing. Anyway, that's waiting at the end there. And eventually we will be able to name it. So this is our vehicle design. You can't build different types of vehicles at the moment. It's just, well, what's that? It looks like it's got like sort of Aston front end. In fact, it looks a bit, it does look like an Aston, I think. Um, either way, uh, you can't build other vehicles. So it's like this is just a generic car at the moment. You, I'm guessing uh, as the game is evolved more, you're going to be able to build like vans and smaller cars, SUVs. You'll be able to like electric vehicles and um, things like that. It would be nice to see all of that. Anyway, so name the vehicle. It's going to be the uh, Aston. Astoon. It's the Astoon and we'll set our profit. You can say, give me loads of money or don't give me any. And obviously we want to set our premium. So we'll set our premium at say, um, we'll say a 40% markup on that one. And we'll save the design and then it will go off to the showroom, which is here. There you go. There's our showroom. So are we going to sell it? Well, if that number goes to zero or just disappears, we know that we've sold it. Excellent. Hmm. Now, obviously, the balance is completely off. There you go. It's just been sold. So we've made a nice bit of money. The balance is completely off. Um, it's it's in alpha. You understand that um, all of this stuff. Um, it's really not about making money because I guess it, it's probably quite easy to make money at this stage because I could probably max speed it and just that's it. I, mean, I sort of won. But um, there's no challenges other than just messing around. But you might be noticing something. We are selling cars and they are coming off the production line, but we've got a massive bottleneck back here. Look at that. That's a problem. We've got uh, essentially one, two, three, four, five chassis waiting for the body to be fitted. Well, why is that? Well, it should be obvious, really. It takes 25 seconds to make chassis, but it takes 63 to actually put the body on it. Hmm. That's not good. And we're waiting for resources as well. In fact, we spent 50% of our time waiting for resources. So we've got a resource issue as well as a issue with the... Um, with it, essentially, it can't keep up. 
You know, these are waiting. These guys are sitting around. These got the easiest job in the world. They just watch a robot build and then they, then they watch it stop for a long time because the guys up ahead ain't building it fast enough. Or rather, the robots aren't. So, what can we do? Well, I think we will build another production line and try and incorporate what we've already learned. So, first things first, we need to check our research office. It's not research yet, so what I'm going to do is be not entirely efficient and just place more research offices just to speed this up just so I can get some research done because what I want to do is I want to start splitting up some of these things here so you can drop these down and drill down into different parts of body but actually for just the frame and then the roof things like that so I want to actually make sure that we build the chassis don't really care about anything else because the chassis is building quite fast but in terms of putting on the body we need to make it uh, faster let's go choose research and we'll go for body specialization research now there we go because we need to, we need to get rid of this. We need to, we need to slim it down a bit, right? So if we look at the body while we are waiting for it to research, it's great out because we haven't got it. You can see that the body frame takes 40 seconds to fit it. The roof nine seconds, and the doors only 13. So put them all together, we get this. Well, we don't want that. It takes 40 seconds to build the body frame. We want to try and make it. I guess as close to the chassis assembly time as possible 25 seconds well we're not gonna be able to do that but we can get it close and we might be able to make it even better because we now got research and we can say choose and you can actually put extra robots on these because that was one of my research let's click on that one 63.35 seconds choose extra robots and you can see it's now down to 57 seconds okay so a bit bit faster that's good Excellent. Uh, by the way, I'm I'm actually losing uh, money according to this here, but uh, you know, um, we might we might lose it. Even though I did say earlier, ah, oh, you can't really lose a game because it's really easy to make money. I I'm not really um, being that efficient. I'm trying to show you uh, how the game works and stuff, as well as um, going through the inefficient bit and then trying to make it better, so you understand. Anyway, how is our research doing? It is on, ooh, 85. Very, very good. I'm going to have to get rid of a couple of these once we are done, just so I don't go bankrupt while building the rest of the line. And almost done there. 95, 6. Keep going. And there we go. Choose next research. I'm going to go for, we could go for building things, but I'm going to go for approved efficiency. That gives us faster drying and faster resource imports, which is always useful. I'm going to get rid of both of these and get some money back. So, let us build another production line. So, chassis. We know we want one of those. We'll slam it down. Probably there. Okay. Resource importer, there. And conveyor, there. Okay. So, that's going to build, in 25 seconds, a chassis. Good, but if we come on at the body, we know that it's going to take uh, 57. So we could, if we really wanted to, just shove two of them down. <laughs> just go bang, two of them. But not that efficient, is it, really? When you consider that most of the time, according to this, is fitting the body frame. The roof and the doors, no time at all. So what we'll do, we've got a fit body frame. Which we know takes 40 seconds. I'm going to shove one down um, here. And we'll shove another one down here. Okay. And then we'll take our conveyor. And we'll connect that up to there. And then we'll do the same over here. Like so. And make sure that it's actually got a three way it is. Yes. So what will happen is it'll build a chassis. Come along and send it to one. And if that's full, it'll send it to the other side. And it'll start backing up. But these are going to take 20 seconds each. Uh, sorry, 40 seconds. So in total, we're about right. We should be okay there. No roof for stockpile. Obviously, we have to fix that. So let's do let's do just that. And we'll go for... Um, best way of doing this. Um, probably... Well, now we're going to have to build across to there. This one is... Probably going to have to do the same. We'll probably go this way instead. It's a bit concerning that these are in specific places because it's uh, a bit difficult. I guess it means you have to pick an area on the map where to sell. As far as I can tell, you want to be close to these as possible. But it doesn't really matter where the output is. 
because the output doesn't really slow you down. Assuming your bottleneck isn't trying to get the things out of the door, which in my experience it isn't. It's getting them built in the first place. So these are building. This is good. Let's then fit the roof, which we will go back to a standard, um, uh, just one of, and then we'll fit the doors, right? Because both of them are quite short in the time. So nine seconds and thirteen seconds. Can you do it in another? Can you do it doors first, then the roof? Um, you may be, may be able to. I don't really know. Either way, we'll take conveyors and we will make sure this connects up to that one. And then this one connects up to there. And there you go. So we've got a chassis coming out. And it will turn around and go into there. No route to stockpile once more. So again, we have to fix that problem. I will probably go resource conveyor over here. Uh, sorry, resource importer. And bring it from there. Which isn't very efficient, I must confess, because it's bloody miles away, but whatever. There we are. There we are. Uh, how much money we're on? Oh, God, it's going down. Right, and then we'll connect these up. So, building the chassis only takes 25 seconds. This one takes... Um, well, the moment, it says 40 seconds. So essentially 40 seconds, 40 seconds, we've got one of these ideally coming off the line every 20 seconds, but it's not exactly that because there's some um, losses when it comes to the waiting for resources. So, yeah. But look, you can see now we've got cars streaming off here. No problem whatsoever. Fantastic. Right, so we've fitted the body and now we go over to painting. But painting again takes a lot longer. It takes 68 seconds. Well, I'd like to resolve that and make it a bit better, but I don't have the resources to do so. And I certainly don't have the research. So I'm just going to have to connect it up to the paint. And then we will fit the engine and then fit the accessories. And then get this car out of the door. Actually, we can't get it out of the door just yet because we haven't actually had a quality check, which we'll put there. Conveyor. And then finally, this can come out and then across. Connect to that part and then go out the same area. So we've got... Um, you know what? I'm going to probably probably have... Is it one, two, three... I'll connect these resource conveyors. You can actually connect the multiples up like that. I, I don't know if it is going to glitch it out. It seems to work, but like everything, especially early on, having multiple connections to resource intakes can generally cause a massive headache for the game as well as just completely brick it up. But we should now have cars coming off this line. What we actually have is pretty much a massive deficit and we're about to go bankrupt. Speaking of that, we can have a look. Oh, yeah, it's bad. Mm. There's our income. There's our expenses. And there's our profit. So I'm just waiting essentially for these cars to come off. But look at all the cars we've got coming off here. Much more cars are streaming off this line now. But now we've got a bottleneck in paint. But we knew that was going to happen. We knew that was going to happen. We just can't do anything about it. Because paint, undercoat... Paint undercoat 7 seconds, drying it 24 seconds. Paint finishes 8 and dries 28. So it's actually the drying that takes most time. So you can actually paint it quite easily. We only really need one paint station, but drying, you're going to need... Uh, well, for the undercoat, I'd say three in order to make sure it's always 7 seconds. But you don't need it 7 seconds, actually, do you? Because we're working on the basis of this being the milestone, 25 seconds. We want 25 seconds as the baseline for every every level, right? So we've got this down to, this is essentially 20, uh, 29, mm, about 40 seconds in total, actually. Actually, no, because these are different stations. This is where the game gets a bit confusing, especially if you're an idiot like me. Um, because there's no real readout other than this, it gets very difficult to work out and understand that. And I think that's where the challenge is going to come in this, like later on down the line for the game. Like, if it doesn't have proper readouts and is readable and, you know, it gives you... Um, essentially, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it, right? So we really need, like, readouts. We need overlays. We need charts, graphs. We need loads of stuff to show you not just where the bottlenecks are, but how long it takes for certain parts to come in, how long it takes for that. And there's some more research, which is good. We'll go over to probably paint. 
Have we got paint? Paint specialization, yes, research now. Um, you know, how long this car took long to get, like, how long it took that part or that bit to get there, why it took that long, how long it was at each individual station, all of that is like pretty much required reading in order to get the best out of your out of your factory, which is after all the whole point in the game. So, how are we doing in terms of money? Well, money, oh, we're hovering around... Well, let's have a quick look. Uh, hmm, well. A lot of the graphs are converging here. We want the blue one to go up, though. Can we sell the car for more? I think making that... That's a good markup for our tune. We're hovering around mid... We're hovering mid-ground here. Around 300,000. But, uh... Yeah. What can we do to improve it? Well, it's paint, isn't it? It's paint. Look at this. This is ready to go. This is kicking these out much faster than these guys. This this thing is. No problem whatsoever. I mean, we can speed it up as well if we really wanted to. Like, we can add we can add uh, upgrades to it. Like I said, I've showed you how you add things like um, extra robots. And adding extra ro on that, <laughs> robots on that, 12 seconds now it takes to do that one. And this one, um, this one's going to take 8 seconds to fit the roof. Very, very quick. But it um, doesn't really matter when it just gets backed up to there. But anyway, we are making money now by the look of it. Oh, yes. That's what we like to see. There's our income. How many we've sold. In total, 35 Astunes in terms of expenses. Ooh, charts and graphs and bars and things like that. Yeah. You wouldn't have thought that the same guy is... Uh, uh, you know, done Democracy 3 and stuff, because that game is just charts and graphs and readouts, which is why I have don't, I don't have any real worries that we're not going to get all of the things we need, because, uh, yeah, he's used to that sort of thing. Hmm. And this shows you, um, like, the... What's it, what is this? Prices. I should prices of bonnets and brakes, because I'm guessing later on you're going to have fluctuations and things based on supply and demand and whether you produce it. I'm guessing there could be uh, well, more expanded research trees, um, maybe outsourcing. There's loads of ways that could you know you could go with this one, but um, either way, at the moment that is a bit of production line. I'm hopeful, very hopeful. Obviously, it's still very early days yet, but you can already see what's trying to be achieved and what is achieved really you know that the whole point is that you will have to streamline this thing so when i research or yeah when i research uh, the the paint specialization i could easily split this off that's why i left a bit of a gap and have more drying stations over here and then funnel into that one and that engine takes 55 seconds so again we'd have to drill down into that one but there's no reason why we can't just have multiple stations for now, or why we can't farm for, say, half of this off to another area. So, you know, it is just essentially about managing all of this. The, the problem is that it's actually a, the Factorio problem, is that Factorio is so, so far ahead of the game when it comes to this sort of thing that I really feel sorry for uh, anyone trying to... No, I wouldn't say imitate, because I don't think this is trying to imitate that obviously it's very much like that sort of thing but they just do it so well they just factory does it so well so you know anyone that's coming along to uh, do something similar is going to be generally unfavorably com uh, compared to it <laughs> because factory just does it so well but yeah, I, I don't think it's unfair to call this a mix between factory and big farmer I don't think it is either way that's production line I quite like it. I don't know how much more I'm going to put into it at the moment. Like I say, it's still very early on for um, perhaps most people's taste. But I thought it was fair to present it as it is now. Like I said, this is still a very early alpha. But you can see the potential. I hope you can see what's going to be uh, added in the future or what may be added in the future. Either way, links are in the description so you can check it out yourself. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and generic partings.